Let's welcome Dr. Julia Ney. Oh, good morning. I love this walk. Each year I am so moved by witnessing such beautiful community around those that I know feel so isolated and alone. The experience of having your sister or your brother, your mother or a concerned aunt, a new friend, a co-worker, or your husband standing here with you, walking the windy zoo's path alongside you is such a poignant image, a concrete representation that says you are not walking this recovery journey alone. We are standing here beside you and with you, and today you are letting us. I love that this walk takes place so horrifically early in the morning. <laughs> How did you all feel at five o'clock in the morning when your alarm went off and you knew it was gonna be this cold? Was the idea of rising up and pushing yourself to get up and out of the darkness, the safety and the solitude of your nice warm bedroom appealing? Or did you want to dive back into bed, jump underneath the covers and retreat until today's event went away, as opposed to risking exposure to potentially painful elements the cold, the wind, and vulnerability. All for a day that merely promises it will all be worth it. Isn't that the perfect metaphor for recovery? The decision to step up and out of your personal space of disorder, solitude, and darkness. To risk discomfort and vulnerability exposure and no longer aloneness for the mere hope of obtaining a life that promises to bring the eventual glory of feeling loved, worthwhile, accepted, or of being good enough just the way you are. Let's Get Real is the powerful theme of this year's Need a Walk. Let's Get Real. But what does that mean and why is it so important? Let's Get Real means two things to me as an eating disorder therapist that's practiced for 26 years. Let's Get Real means let's start talking about the very real and difficult life events and complex emotional layers that oftentimes go into the development of an eating disorder. Let's Get Real, like Patty just did, about sharing these painful experiences and difficult emotional processes with others as an absolute and necessary reparative step towards healing yourself and attaining full and lasting recovery for life. No one develops an eating disorder just because. If you are struggling to recover from an eating disorder, somewhere somehow you developed some version of a belief system that said, it's not safe to share my true feelings, my real self with others. Perhaps you were a highly sensitive child and the world was simply too dangerous. Perhaps you took in cultural or family messages that said you needed to look or be a certain way to be loved. Perhaps you were criticized or felt different or were neglected or abused. Perhaps you were bullied or forgotten or had such high expectations for yourself that you could never, ever feel good enough. And thus you hid yourself away from others. Yet you are here today. Shame, regret, guilt, experiences of bullying, rejection, or abuse. When these pieces of yourself are kept secret, hidden alone, deep within yourself, Ed gains power. Ed becomes the only friend you allow in to help you, to give you emotional relief, or to tell you that you are okay, but you are not. 
After treating eating disorders for 26 years, I believe that no one can recover alone. Whatever has led to your personal story of disorder or insecurity or self-doubt, need for control through use of food or manipulation of your body, you can only be healed, truly healed, in relation to others. To reach full recovery, you have to step out of the darkness. You have to leave your personal space of emotional isolation and solitude, to stop hiding, to risk to be seen, and to share your real self, your true feelings, and your real life experiences with those around you. Let's get real. If you have been keeping yourself alone, look around you. Look to your left. Look to your right and see who is standing alongside you. Look at who is willing to be here with you, for you, but you have to let them in. Think about opening up. Think about sharing your pain, your fears, your secrets. Think about deliberately risking to expose the very parts of yourself and your history that you feel are unacceptable or unworthy of love or that bring you shame that have helped to keep you hidden alongside Ed and away from the light and the love of others. Only when you risk to get real with others can you truly challenge your fears of being rejected, criticized, or judged only by risking to share your heart and your secrets with others who deserve to receive them can you challenge old fears and make room for new experiences where others no longer wound you, judge you, criticize you, or reject you. And maybe, just maybe, you'll find that not only will others no longer harm you, perhaps, just maybe, you will find that some trusted and loving others will embrace you, lift you up, and help carry you along until you can carry yourself, both in self-love and into recovery. No one can recover alone. And by the looks of this beautiful, loving crowd, no one has to. Look around at this beautiful day and mark it as the day you not only rose up and chose to step out of the darkness of your bedroom, but that you chose to step out of your eating disordered solitude. Seize your moment. Take back your life. Don't stay hidden. There are loving, accepting, honoring, and validating people all around you waiting for you to step out of your darkness and into their light. Full recovery is possible. Thank you. Oh,